Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be going over a rendition of the Renzetti style solid tool post, but we've got a little bit of a twist with this one that I think is really cool. So we're going to be going over the design and how it works and then at the end we'll test out, uh, test it out and see how good it is. So here we have the body of the post itself. It's machined out of a solid piece of ductile iron. As you can see, it's been contoured nicely and then cold blued after. But some unique design considerations for this particular post are one, as you can see, the tool post mount is actually off-centered uh, from the middle of the cross slide, and that's on purpose. So what that does is by having the tool post over here, the loads on the cutting tool are above the dovetail of the way. So previously with the tool post over here, if you have a parting tool or something, that load out here tends to want to twist the whole cross slide, which is significantly less rigid than having the loads just over the ways and going straight down rather than creating a, a bending moment across it. So not only is it more rigid because the compound is gone, but it's more rigid because the loads are better applied to the cross slide itself. The second thing to note here is how, it's actually, is how the tool post base is actually mounted to the cross slide. So as you can see, three out of the four bolts our simple socket head cap screws, half, these are half 13, that we've tapped into the cross slide for, and they simply bolt it down. But because our tool post mount is offset to the back right corner, you can see we couldn't put a socket head cap screw there without losing a large amount of balls and having a huge hole in the mating face. So our solution to this was to use a differential screw stud, um, similar to how Robin actually mounted his vice jaws, uh, if you're familiar with that video. But basically, here's more or less exactly what's in there. It is a eight millimeter hex with two threads, a left hand and a right hand. The base of the, the cross slide is drilled and tap for the right hand thread and the uh, tool post itself is tapped left handed. So what we do basically is we put the stud on there, put the tool post on top, drop a hex through the top and then when we tighten it, it pulls the bottom up and it pulls the top down which allows us to bolt the two together and all you need is a hole big enough for your hex. So you can see, just with this little extension and socket here, we are able to tighten the stud down and loosen it that way. And that way, all we lose is one ball rather than four or five. Speaking of balls, let's talk about the balls you see here because this is the most unique part about this design and it's what I like most. When we decided to do the solid tool post uh, modification for this lathe, we uh, were huge fans of all the benefits that were outlined in Robin's video, but the one thing that I wasn't quite keen on was the inability to tilt the tool post to different angles. I understand it's not every day we have to cut a taper, but sometimes, well, I would say often, it is useful to be able to move the tool post around to a different angle uh, to reach a certain part or to uh, cut a different angle on something just with a, a form tool. However, the idea of having a tool post that's very repeatable and always in the same position so you can maintain an accurate tool library is also one of the main reasons I wanted to do this as well. So I came up with a system that allows us to index the tool post however we want, um, but also allows us a very repeatable zero location so even if we move it to a certain angle, we can move it back and then our tool library and all of our offsets will still be 100% accurate. 
So what this, what this is here is a bolt hole pattern of 48 bolts, or 40, sorry, not bolt hole pattern, but a circular pattern of 48 1 8 inch hardened steel balls. So that gives us an angular division of seven and a half degrees. So we have 15, 30, 45, 90, all of the, the common angles. And these are machined so that there is a spherical seat with a small relief in the bottom and a small chamfer on the edge of the spherical seat. And that spherical seat is exactly the radius deep. So it is 0 0.0625 uh, from the top surface. So exactly half of the balls are sitting in there in theory. Now, I said in theory, the balls in reality are sitting very slightly proud of the surface because of the film thickness of the glue we used to glue them in here. And we used a uh, Loctite 380 Black Max um, to really nicely permanently affix them into these holes here. The top is also milled very, very flat uh, on the CNC. It's not ground so that the surface will be completely uh, aligned and coplanar with the uh, ball hole pattern, which was also made on the CNC. And it was heavily stoned with the precision ground flat stones to really increase the contact area. And in reality, it's extremely flat, um, almost as flat as the surface plate, in fact, with a pretty good varying area. The tool post is here. And as you can see, we've bolted a identical feature to the bottom of this. It's the same spherical seats, which you can start to see here. There's a large chamfer on the outside, a little pocket for the ball to sit in, and then a relief at the bottom. And these are machined to the exact same dimension, 0 0.0625 deep. So, when we put the tool post on the base here, in theory, in a geometrically ideal world, the faces would touch. These flat faces would touch because the balls would, would be entirely flush with both of the surfaces and they would sit flush. In reality, what happens is because they're sitting on that film thickness of the glue, when we put it on, the first thing that happens is the balls here contact the seats and the tool post, which allow it to be quasi-kinematically located. And because there's 48 balls in this pattern, you get a very high degree of elastic averaging as well, which further increases the uh, accuracy and repeatability of the setup here. So it sits on the balls because they're slightly proud of the surface just by, and this is tense. This is, this is a hard, hardly uh, any, any gap at all. So then what happens is we put on the nut, we tighten the, the uh, tool post down, and it squeezes and slightly elastically deforms uh, the seats, the uh, glue as well, and it brings those surfaces into perfect mating contact so you get really good rigidity because you have full face contact, but you're kinematically located before that. So your positional accuracy or your angular, angular accuracy is also very, very good. So let me go ahead and show that here. I'll take the tool post and I'll go ahead and put it down on the stud. Like so. There we go. Now, I'll move the camera here. And this will be rather hard to see, but oh, can you, you can see that. There is a minuscule gap between the post and the base here. And this is, it's really, it's less than a thousand it is a tiny, tiny, tiny gap. So we're sitting on the balls, which are all in this accurate pattern, elastically averaged. So right now we have very good quasi-kinematic location. Now I'll go ahead and take the nut 
put that on there and torque it down like that and if we look again no more gap it has squeezed those balls elastically deformed the seats and brought this into full face contact so very very rigid setup there and you can see if there was a tool here which there will be in a moment the forces are going to be over the dovetails which further increases rigidity so here's just a visual demonstration of exactly how thick that gap is and how much we're compressing it so right now the nut is loose so it's sitting on the spherical seats there is it's sitting slightly high of the two faces touching and I'll come over here we've got the millimes zeroed on the uh, the tool post uh, base and I will now tighten this down and we'll be able to see how much it gets squeezed down there give it a good torque and there we go so right about exactly two tenths of squeeze which is a very small number but that is exactly what it was designed to be so let's do an actual test of the angular repeatability of this setup here uh, i can't measure uh, actual ang angular um, measurements but i've got the millimesh set up on the tip of the uh, tool here so we can see what the real uh, displacement error is uh, measured from where the tool will actually be cutting. So take note, the uh, millimes is sitting right at the uh, two mark on there. I'm gonna take it, index it seven and a half degrees to the next, uh, next position over, move it back. And we're within 20 millionths repeatability there. Hope you guys enjoyed that. This was a super fun project for me to do, and I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. It's basically exactly how I imagined it would be. So, can't wait to start using this thing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.